Welcome back, and for this Flutter Studio Tech Tip, we're going to talk about Caster. Um, caster is something that if you've ever got an alignment like this, you know, there, there's camber and toe, which are front and rear, very easy to understand, but there's also in front caster. Um, it's not very often discussed, probably not, not mentioned or, or discussed maybe as much as it should, not understood maybe as much as it should be, and it's a really important factor as far as how your car is going to turn, how your suspension is going to work, and how much front grip you're going to get out of your car. And so when you, if you're starting to look at uh, you know, going to the track, getting the maximum traction out of your car, increasing your lap times because you've got a lot more grip in the corners, caster is something that you've got to look at. So that's what we want to focus on today. What is it? Uh, and, and why does it matter? So just to start, we're, we're going to, we'll just talk about the ones that are easy uh, right up front. Uh, toe and camber. So brought these these bicycle wheels in um, So toe is, is very straightforward if if I'm the center of the car Putting the front of the tires towards the center is toe in putting the rear of the tires towards the center of the car is toe out And that could be applied to the front and the rear um, If you tip the tops of the tires in like this that is negative camber and if you tip the tires out That is positive camber and again that could be applied to the front or the rear Caster is much harder to demonstrate with, with a wheel like this. Um, and it's, it's first something to notice, the reason that it's only on your front alignment setting is because caster only comes into play or is a factor on, on uh, tires that are, wheels and tires that are turned. Uh, in the rear, because they're always just pointing the direction that they're pointing and they're not turning, caster is not measured or is not a factor. But up front, because you are turning um, the wheels and tires to turn the car, that's where caster comes into play and it's really important. Fundamentally, or, or simply put, what caster is, is the, the angle of rotation that the front tire is turning around. So uh, the best way that I've found to demonstrate that is with just a simple sheet of, of rectangle paper. If you assume that this is just the center sliver of the tire, top to bottom, caster is that angle in which it's turned around. So if, if you uh, tip that uh, angle of rotation towards the front of the car, that is negative caster. If you tip it towards the back of the car, that is positive caster. So if I'm the back of the car tipping it back this way, that's positive caster. So, so what does this do and why does it matter? Well, if you look at this paper and assume that, that this is a right tire and we've got some pretty substantial positive caster, as I turn the tire to go left, um, you can see that what's happened is, is the bottom has gone down, uh, the, or the, the inside edge has gone down, the outside edge has gone up, and what we've effectively done is gained some negative camber. If we move that same uh, tire over to the inside and look at it the same way, what has happened is we've actually moved the inside up, the outside down, and we've gained some positive camber. So what we've got here is a dynamic behavior, that as we're turning the steering wheel, as we're turning the wheel and tire, the alignment is changing from what you would see on this alignment sheet to, to something else. So when, whenever we're talking to a customer about alignment, what, I, what we refer to this as is, is your static alignment or static alignment setting, static camber. Because these numbers are generated when your car is sitting on an alignment rack, it's stationary. It's not moving, the wheels aren't turning, it's just st st steady. As you're turning your wheel, because you're turning to go around a corner, Everything is, is moving and a lot is going on and that's where caster comes into play with that dynamic behavior. And, and the reason that that's important is because, you know, again, if, if we assume that this is our wheel and this is our right wheel and we're going around a left corner, if we want to maximize the traction of this tire on that outside, we actually want some negative camber. Um, you know, as we're turning this way, the weight of the, the car is, is pushing down more on this to get the maximum traction out of this tire at the, at the road. We want that tire to be tipped you know, a little bit negative, and that's what's going to give us the best traction. But if we look at that same tire and put it on the inside, the opposite is true. We don't actually want negative camber because, you know, the weight is coming away from that. We actually want some positive camber to get the maximum traction out of that tire at the road. But that's not something you can really set up on a streetcar because you're turning left and right. If you look at a NASCAR or, you know, something uh, that's uh, a race car that's always going in a circle, what you're going to see is exactly that. Both of their tires are, are turned in the same direction. One's negative, one's positive, because that, if, you, if you're optimizing for one direction of turn, that's how you optimize, uh, optimize your traction. So when you're, when you're trying to drive a streetcar or a track car that's going around a circuit and you're going left and right, 
it's much, well, you want that behavior, but you can't just set it up from the word go. And that's where caster comes in, because that's where you get that dynamic behavior um, as you're, as you're turning, turning the wheel. So how, but it, it's great to show this display, but how much of a change are we actually getting? Well, what we did uh, on both Scotty's car here and our Pike's Peak car is we took this bubble gauge. Um, this is not a, a highly precise instrument, but it's enough to get us in the ballpark. It's enough to show what is going on as, as you turn the wheel. So what we did, um, well, and so first I'll tell you, uh, both Pike's Peak car and Scotty's car here um, are set, set at about eight degrees of caster, but up to that, and they're sitting at about negative two to negative two and a half degrees of static camber. So what we did is we put the bubble gauge on their, their wheels, pointed straight ahead, and we saw that. Then what we did is we did one full turn to the right, and then back to center, and then one full turn to the left, and put the bubble gauge on in both cases. And we got pretty much the same results uh, in, in both on Scotty's car and on Pike's P car. Um, what you see is that as you turn left, uh, so on, on the outside wheel, you're gaining about a degree and a quarter to a degree and a half of an additional negative camber. So that's going to make that wheel grab even better um, on the outside. What's really interesting is as you turn it back to the other direction, put it and look at what's happening to the inside wheel, what happens there is we have about five degrees of camber change. We go from about two and a half degrees negative to two and a half degrees positive. So that is going to make that front tire grip a lot better um, than, uh, than it would if, if we weren't getting that dynamic behavior. And that is a factor of how much caster the car is running. Um, there's another interesting aspect to that. So again, if you, we're looking at our center slice of tire, um, the reason that we're gaining positive or negative camber in the given situation is because we're, we're putting you know, one, one corner, one edge of the tire down and pulling one edge of the tire up. So what we also did is we took tape measure and we looked at this, this uh, back of the bumper, back corner of the bumper. And what you see is you know, when, when the wheels are pointed straight to when they're, we're looking at the outside tire, there's really minimal change in the height of that outside. Uh, corner of the car. As you turn to the inside, what you see on both both of these cars is we actually gain about a centimeter of ride height to uh, on the inside of, of, the, of the car, and that's because that inside tire is shifting can, uh, the camber angle about five degrees, and it's pushing down or, or raising up the car. So that makes that also gives a, an increase in performance because if you think about it, on the outside edge, the, the weight transfer of the car is naturally going to go there. It's going to push more towards that outside edge, which means you're going to lift off that front inside edge. In, in an in extreme, you can actually like, you know, pull up a little bit on on that inside edge. So so having the, the positive camber plus having basically the tire reach down to stay in contact with the road or push down into the road more to keep more in contact. It, both of those factors are what give you a lot more traction on the inside tire um, with, that, with that kind of alignment setting. So what the, the, the honest question that this leads to is why wouldn't you just maximize caster? Well, just, just throw as much caster as you possibly can at any car. Well, there's some things to keep in mind with caster and there's some limitations. Um, first, before we go into that, I will mention that there are, there are other factors that are at play with, with that dynamic uh, camera behavior. One of them is tow. So if you've got a car that's towed out, you're going to get a little bit more accentuated um, camber change than if you have tow in. Um, that's something uh, to be aware of. And also just the overall angle of the suspension uh, and, and how it's all rotating also is a factor. And again, you know, it comes back to the design. You know, if you've got a McPherson suspension versus a double wishbone versus multi-length, they're all going to behave a little bit differently as you go through the, the rotation of the tire. So something like a simple bubble gauge like this or, or like a, the, the uh, level in your phone or something like that, you can, you can kind of look at, you know, put your tire lock to lock and see what's going on, give you a sense of how much change you're getting. But those are things, those are other aspects to look at. Um, but so here's, here's the downsides to cast or, or the things to watch out for. Um, first, because you're, you're, you're pushing up against the weight of the car, your steering is going to get heavier. If you have a manual rack or like in a go-kart, you add caster, you're going to know it immediately. It's much harder to turn. Um, in a power steering car, much less of a factor, but at an extreme, it can put more stress on your power steering pump. Um, next is because you're getting a lot more of this dynamic behavior, what can happen is that you're, you're, you're getting a lot more grip because you're using your tires more, but you're going to have more wear because you're using your tires a lot more aggressively. 
Um, for instance, on Subarus, inner edge tire wear on the fronts is something always to pay attention to. If you're going to get really aggressive with caster, then it's definitely something to pay attention to. You can definitely see some accelerated inner edge tire wear if you, if you start running a lot of caster. Um, the other downside is, is there are physical limitations to how much you can change. Um, you know, in a lot of cars, like on Honda S2000, Acura NSX, there are, there are factory bolts that let you adjust caster within reason. Um, on a Subaru, there, is, there isn't such a thing. So you have to put in other components to, to change that caster setting. So like in Scotty's car here, he's got a, an anti-lift kit in the back uh, for the rear bushing of the lower control arm. So what that does, you know, again, if this is the, uh, the front of the tire, it drops the angle of the lower control arm. And then it also moves, um, pushes it out, pushes that front ball joint out further. That's where the caster comes from. Um, in doing so, like if you were to look at just the side uh, wheel well of the car, what you'll see is that the wheel and tire is not centered in the wheel arch. It's actually pushed forward. Um, and as you start to turn the car, you know, once you had a lot of caster, that way you turn, this, this front bumper, front fender well, really becomes a factor. It, it becomes a limiting factor as far as how much you can push that, um, that lower control arm and still be able to turn the car and have clearance up here. You know, the bigger wheels and tires are running, the bigger the consideration that would be. So you can't just throw maximum caster at the car all the time. But, you know, if you're, if you're taking your car to the track, um, it's definitely something worth looking at, worth considering, and worth trying to modify because getting more front grip, getting, a, getting more efficient behavior of those front tires can have a massive impact on, on the handling characters of the car, the, the confidence of the car as far as when you're going in or going around the corner because you're, you're really utilizing those tires and maximizing your front grip. Um, yeah, so those are, those are some of the things to consider with caster and that's why it's so important. Um, hopefully this video helps to kind of cut through some of the mystery as far as what caster is, why, why it's important and why it's worth paying attention to, especially when you start going going to the track. So if you found this video helpful, please drop a like uh, and stay tuned for more Flatiron Student Tech Tips.